This is the latest in the 45's uh, I Want That Job series. We are talking to inspiring women about their careers behind the scenes, sometimes in front of the scenes. Today we are talking to the wonderful Louise Latimer. She is, I mean, not only is she an excellent manager, she is a recently awarded excellent manager. She just won Breakthrough Manager of the Year at the Artist and Manager Awards, which is sort of concrete proof that she's brilliant. Um, she looks after self-esteem, the big moon. She has looked after many other people People along the way and we will be chatting to her about how she's done it tips for people that want to get involved etc etc um, I'm hoping that Louise is going to be joining this call so that I can let her in so that you don't have to listen to me waffle for ages um, my name's Lisa Wright uh, I am a journalist I'm at 45 and other places and if you want to listen to more of these conversations uh, with excellent people throughout the industry. Go back on the for Oh, here's Lou. Lou, if you um, click join the thing, then I can let you in. Um, but yes, there are many, many, uh, I say many, probably about six so far, uh, of these uh, talking to PRs and radio people and lots of excellent inspiring women. Oh, come on, internet. <laughs> gonna work. Keeps. Okay. Hmm. Oh. Hello. Hey. Hello. There we go. Hello. 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 How are you? I'm okay. How are you? I am good. Yeah. A bit nippy, but it's all right. And it? it's just sort of dreary. But in the bubble of in yeah. life, weather doesn't exist. This is purely the internet, and there's no outside weather world, so it's fine. Um, no future, no past. Yeah. My um, my uh, mum bought me this phone holder for Christmas. Oh, hello. Okay. And, and I was like, when am I ever going to use that? And look at me now. Look at her go. Within a, a month. Not, not even February yet, <laughs> and already being fruitful. I'm going to um, move back a bit because I feel a bit big. Okay. I... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yes. Thank you so much for joining us. Let me do. I did a little bit of spiel before you joined, but to introduce. Louise Latimer, manager extraordinaire. I would say the main, I mean, at the moment, your current main projects are self-esteem and the big moon. Obviously, there have been many others that we can talk through. Um, you have worked across different management companies, doing your own thing. I feel like I have a really wide experience over how many years now? Like 15 years, something like that? Yeah, probably more than that, like 18, 17, 18. I'm yeah, really but what? Not very old very useful, <laughs> but i think also you know the fact that you've just won this breakthrough management award is probably also uh, a thing to talk about that it actually takes fucking ages to sort of make inroads in these jobs and it's you know it's a commitment and it's not a sort of overnight thing where you suddenly pick up a buzz band and then you go off flying to the brits yeah um, yeah, we will talk about all of this stuff. I mean, I guess maybe a nice point to start in is like on a basic level, like what is the job of an artist manager, like as a day to day thing? Okay, so it's kind of a bit of everything, really. So, and it sort of depends on how, at what stage the artist is at in their career, but it can be like everything from making sure that they've got out of bed and they're going to make their first meeting on time or whatever to doing deals for them or helping them decide which deal to do finding them deals in the first place deciding on like the long-term plan for their career and the um the main goal making sure that eventually they're going to be financially self-sufficient as an artist and be able to do it as a career which is obviously really hard <laughs> in this day and age um, and also just like building the team so um taking on press people radio people lawyers agents like every artist has a ton of people around them and i guess it's my job to and labels and publishers it's my job to coordinate with all of them all of the time make sure everyone knows what's going on at all times um make sure everyone's doing their job and choosing them in the first place is obviously it's all that would be a a, a decision you, you make with the artist but i guess yeah Oh, oh no, you've gone a bit quiet. Oh, oh, I think it's my internet being done. No, someone was calling me, but I've cancelled it. <laughs> the, the, the life of a man. Yeah. <laughs> my, 
it happened a few times. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, all of that stuff. I mean, I guess the fundamental is like your the point. You're like the first barrier of contact. Yeah, like to the artists, which I would imagine has like. I mean, the thing that I'm always intrigued about is like that sort of manager artist relation, like how much of it is like tough love, how much of it is sort of like being their, you know, biggest defender or like sort of telling them that actually, you know, you've got to be a bit like, I don't know. I think, what do you think from your experience is the key to like a good working relationship with, with that person that you're spending so much time with? Um, I guess it's just working out what they need and then trying to be that person um, with the ultimate goal of what I said earlier of making them a career artist. So like it completely varies from artist to artist. Like some artists really do need help, like having the enthusiasm to make music or having the enthusiasm to bother doing interviews or like, or we'll say no to everything. And you're like constantly just trying to um, explain why things will be beneficial for their career if I think they are um, so sometimes it's a bit like that uh, I often find with like younger artists it can be a bit like that um, <laughs> and then and then but then on the flip side there's like you know someone like Rebecca self-esteem she knows exactly what she wants and 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 she's been in this industry a long time as well um, and so it's it's not it's not so much of me being like you should, well it sometimes is but it's not so much that it's more just like she needs um support and she comes up with the ideas and we make we me and cherish my co-manager we make it happen that's that's what she needs and we're kind of like you know some artists need ideas she definitely does not need ideas so it's like it, it completely varies yeah. I think she needs a holiday by the by the <laughs> yes i actually literally just put one in the diary today whether it's going to stay in there i don't know <laughs> extending the cabaret run man you know? <laughs> please no <laughs> um go back a bit in terms of like your progression all that kind of stuff like like before you started your first like proper kind of management job like what was it that drew you to that part of the industry had you had other experience in other areas or was that always the thing that kind of felt like the right fit um i um did a drama degree i wanted to be an actor or like i just that was the only thing i was vaguely interested in so i did a drama degree back when degrees were like free um and I just gradually kind of while i was at uni got very into the local music scene and started putting on shows, like promoting shows myself, well, with some, with my best friend Lizzie um, of summer camp fame. Um, and we used to like put on shows in the student union and like in like small club in Deptford and things like that. And through doing that, I got to know, I got to know various um, industry people and kind of like started to get a feel for like how the industry worked and met other managers and, thought it was like the coolest thing ever um <laughs> so I think I kind of uh, through doing that is when I kind of realized that management was would be a really great thing to do or, or at least I realized that maybe the music industry is where I wanted to be because I was way more interested in music and going to shows than I was to um like going to plays really um yeah. so that's kind of when I realized and then I um basically like m like managed to get a few small music industry jobs by like i think i offered to do merch for a very very small record label i was like going through my hip-hop phase offered to do merch for this little hip-hop label who was like doing some nights and their artists were playing stuff and through doing that i got to know the label a little bit and then tried to get a job with them for ages and eventually they hired me to do some like mailing out of like rare hip-hop records in their office twice a week um and so I did that for a while, got to know the nuts and bolts of like how a label worked and things. Um, I did one year where I suddenly decided I wanted to be a PR. Um, and one year was definitely enough of that, <laughs> as you can imagine. <laughs> Worst job in the music industry. I don't know how they do it. <laughs> Mad respect. Um, but yeah, I just, I again, like I was working at, in the, in the, for the, for the online shop. And then I was, 
on the side doing PR for like tiny little bands that I found and they'd pay me like a hundred pounds for a single or whatever. Um, so that gave me like some experience, more experience in the industry. And then I, I think at that point I realized that management was definitely the most fun one because you get, you got to like hang out with the artist and it was way more creative and, um, and, I, and I, you know, it's very, it's a bit of everything being a manager. It's completely different week to week. So that's really fun. Um, so then I think uh, I, yeah, that's when I kind of realized and then I just started applying for loads of jobs and eventually just through a friend of a friend who knew that I'd been doing various music industry assistant job roles um, and putting on shows and stuff, put me forward for a job at Empire Artist Management, which was like a, in those days, like one of the biggest management companies. And they did like Daniel Beddingfield and Natasha Beddingfield and Lily Allen. And, um, and so I covered for someone's maternity there. And that was the start of it. Was that the question you asked? Yeah. <laughs> that was like a very long answer. All of these, like, the sort of uniform thing with everyone that I've done these chats with is that almost no one goes direct to the job <laughs> you end up in. Like, like everyone sort of tries a bit of that and does a bit of that and you meet this person there and you sort of have like a weird little wiggly route that gets you to where you are, but you sort of pick up the stuff along the way. Yeah. And like with management, because like you're saying, it is a bit of everything. Like are there certain sort of like not even just skills but like a disposition that you feel is like sort of works with that like I think you know there are certain jobs where like you really need to be fucking patient or you really need to be very sort of like cutthroat in certain decisions and stuff like did you find that as you were learning there were certain things that you sort of like found yourself prioritizing in that way um I I think the main thing is that I'm a Virgo and Virgos <laughs> Virgos naturally just want to organize other people yeah. and generally they're quite calm um, so, so I'm definitely those two things like I'm one of those sort of annoying people that if someone's got a problem even if it's like they're sad about something I'm like that annoying person that's like, okay, cool. How can we fix this? Let's be practical. Let's do this, that, and the other. And maybe they just want to wallow in their sadness. And I'm there being like, I've got you a therapist, you know? Like, <laughs> I think there's an, I'm just naturally one of those people that wants to fix things. Yes. Yeah. And, um, and I, um, really like music, which helps. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think a lot of management at the very early stages is actually just like, telling someone that they're really good at what they do mm. and and because lots of artists like just don't have the confidence and and i think um all you need at that early stage is is someone just going like this is really good this is not as good like you're amazing why don't we try this you know yeah 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 just a champion yeah. i think yeah um okay so you start so when you started at the first company i'm guessing you didn't get thrown in the deep end with you know lily allen's like mad sort of you know whatever her sort of peak period was like is that you know presumably some of the first artists that you were working on by yourself were like smaller things that you had to kind of get from the ground up like and there when you're starting with a completely new artist like, what would you say the sort of like nuts and bolts of like the first things that you kind of want to get in place to kind of get the ball rolling with with their campaigns? Um, so, yeah, yeah, I I mean, on the one hand, I was thrown in the deep end because I was doing like N Natasha Beddingfield's day sheets and things like that. Um, so that was interesting. But yeah, I was then like developing my own things while I was there and learning from them on one side and then developing new things. Um, I guess it was slightly different in those days because we had like thousands of blogs and like that's how like new artists arrived into the industry. Um, nowadays it's a bit, bit different, but I think uh, like, as I said earlier, just like telling someone they're good helping them work out what's really good and what isn't so good um try and help them build the world around the music they've made so like the aesthetic of everything which 
um, you know, social media, starting Instagram pages, making sure that everything is uh, linked together is a really good starting place and something that um, all of my acts do really well. And Rebecca Self Esteem is a good example of this, like from the very, very beginning, like before she'd even written a song, she was, she had like an Instagram with like, she was selling t-shirts with with logos on that would then become songs later down the line you know like and that's how like the whole the whole world had been created it wasn't just about the music and every new artist needs to do that because every label is looking for that um uh i also think obviously getting the music to a place where it's really special um like obviously if you're like a young new artist like it's ideal if you're able to kind of engineer and record your own music and record your own demos um even more ideal if you can find a producer who will help you produce it for very cheap or for free um like a new up-and-coming producer working with a new up-and-coming artist it's like that's you know um a way to get really good recordings potentially without spending much money mm -hmm. um there's lots of grants available like prs grants um that can help brand new artists record and tour. Uh, performing live in your local area um, is obviously, you know, so many artists and bands that get signed, particularly in the kind of like the alternative sphere. Um, but maybe that's just because I know it better. But you know, so many artists that get bands that get signed have come out of us like of a world of a scene of like playing in the same venues a lot and and building it from there and people just hearing about them naturally and that kind of like natural you know the windmill is a perfect example of somewhere that does that brilliantly and so many bands have come out of it you know um so i so that's another key thing i think for a new artist um so yeah building the world making a live world and making demos that are really really good yeah yeah i think that's sort of like trying to find people that are at a similar level to you when you can kind of grow together and yeah we kind of level each other up is quite a nice thing i think also i'm aware that i'm sort of chopping and changing with things here mm -hmm. but just something that you said about like day sheets i think a lot of people won't know what stuff like that is so like that's kind of obviously you know there's different arms of management there's sort of like your day-to-day -day managers and then the, what would you call like just general manager i don't know what what do you call the main one just, just manager the manager yeah <laughs> manager and assistant manager and then day-to-day -day manager is is um yeah, the yeah. Way. so day-to-day -day, so what so um a day-to-day -day manager will do just like all literally all of the day-to-day the -day stuff like all of the kind of admin -y stuff a lot of like the organizational stuff so like when i say day sheets i mean like working out exactly what Natasha is doing with her day and what, you know, she's got to be here at 10 a.m. I'm going to get her a cab to go to, a, to the label at 12 and, you know, like and writing it all out for her and making sure that she has all the information that everything has been organized properly. Um, that's the job of a day today, but it's also like learning, uh, you know, you, you need to like be able to budget things. So if like an artist is doing a radio session, like the day to day manager would, uh, budget how much doing that radio session is going to cost so they do a budget that shows like the travel the, the how much the sound engineer is going to be how much the you know whatever um and then sending it to the relevant people whether that's the record label or the manager or whatever and then keeping track of those costs making sure everything has been paid um and then dealing with like kind of being the first port of call for a lot of the um requests that come in so like various press requests it's the day-to-day -day managers responsibility to generally like run them past the artist um and you know it's actually just like probably even more in contact with the artist than the main manager is um because the ma main manager is managing the day-to-day -day manager and the day-to-day -day manager is const in constant contact with the artist yeah okay so that's like very kind of di diary organization or yeah do you think that like do people look for people that have kind of got qualifications or have studied in things or do you think that doesn't really matter when you're kind of going into this i was thinking, well, thinking about this earlier because i thought you might ask me this i like i would say no um i don't, I don't think anyone's ever asked me what 
degree I did since mm. joining the music industry. I don't, it just doesn't, it's not relevant really. But I think the only time that it would um, be relevant is, you know, like BIM, the music school, they actually do like music management courses. Like if I was hiring someone and they had a BIM degree, that would probably be pretty cool. Um, but it's expensive though. Um, but yeah, generally, I think it's just like you have to be an organized person. But that said, I'm not actually that organized. My day to day people are generally way better than I am. <laughs> but I've obviously managed to blag it through this far and no yeah. one's noticed. But that is that's also a good point. Like most, most of the music industry is just blagging it. And like, I mean, most of the people in every industry is just blagging it. You just you can just it's like you don't necessarily you don't need a qualification. It for to be in the music industry, you definitely don't need one to be a music manager. You just wake up one day and say that you're a music manager and you're giving advice to an artist, like, and then it grows from there. And and I think that that is the prime reason that there's way more men in the music industry than there are women, because men are way more likely to be like, oh yeah, I can do that. I'll just blag it. You know, women don't necessarily like think like that instantly. You have to kind of push yourself into thinking like that and egg yourself on to have that confidence but it's just true everyone's blagging it i'm blagging it still because the the industry is constantly changing the way we do things the way we make money it's all completely different to how it was two years ago even so you know it's an evol a constantly evolving thing and and the ways in which you can be successful are so diverse you know like you can have a massive tiktok hit but not be able to sell one ticket in london you know um so yeah you just have to adapt and everyone is adapting and blagging it yeah i think that is really really that is the crux of the point i think um and also yeah just speak you know be confident man be confident and black yeah but yeah i think like with that you know obviously industry is adapting everything is adapting but also on a sort of just personal level you know i guess like what is the model for someone like rebecca where like I don't think there is a very sort of established indie band to pop star to musical theatre <laughs> <laughs> like that is, that is a very sort of unique thing to her yeah. that you have to kind of uh, work with and nurture and find ways that that sort of like works for her like I guess she's a really great example of like really tailoring something to the artist and not just sort of blindly ticking off things as you go yeah like with like her where you know first self-esteem album was a bit of a sort of slow burner and then it felt like everything really started exploding like around the start of prioritized pleasure like are there sort of certain moments in that whole trajectory that felt really pivotal for you and like maybe anything where you can sort of explain a bit about how you helped those things to happen um yes so, so my like mantra in music management is just that you you as long as you put out incredible records and as long as your record that you have is better than the last one then you're and you play amazing live shows then you're generally always going to grow and obviously that's not always true but that's just how i like to like exist because <laughs> it makes me feel better when things don't go particularly well um but i'm always hammering away saying that's big moon like and, it, and it's they're they're proof of it and that they've you know that they're a band who've had they have had like a mercury nomination on their first record which did definitely take them up a lot up a notch but they haven't necessarily had like the explosion into the mainstream like rebecca has mm -hmm. Um, but they're still like, you know, now in a really amazing place about to go into their fourth record, probably going to be doing like a Hammersmith or a Brixton on the next album. And they've literally just like put out amazing records and every record has been amazingly received. And and like, it, it's so much of it comes down to the music and so much of it comes down to luck, just like being in the right place at the right time. Like, you know, I think they are a band who would have been who would be even further along had COVID not happened because that because their album came out the month the month before COVID hit, so they couldn't tour it. And that happened for so many acts. Um for Rebecca, on the flip side, it, it was amazing for her because she was making her record during COVID and it kind of gave her like the uh the time and the drive and the, you know, she, she was just like all she could do was work and think about it and and that that created prioritized pleasure. So, um, 
But yeah, with her, like, obviously there's been so many incredible moments, the Mercury nomination, but I think the most pivotal moment was probably Glastonbury in 2022. Um, and I knew that, that we, I think we definitely all knew that that was going to be a really special show. And it, but it's just like, it just hit at exactly the right moment. And that stuff you can't, you can plan to a degree in that, like, you know, we put the album out in October. We hoped we might get some album of the years, which we did. And then, and then Glastonbury was one of the early summer live moments, you know? So it's like, it fell perfectly. And, and that was planned to, to a degree, but also it's just kind of, uh, some of it is just luck, right place, right time, connecting with what's up and also just a, what the audience felt like they needed you know there was no one saying what she was saying there was nothing that sounded particularly like it either and it just it just hit at the right time yeah and unfortunately you just have to trust the universe on those things and and if you do like if you do keep releasing great music hopefully that moment will will come for you um but you can't plan it <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i guess like half of the job is like you know riding the train when everything good is happening and half of it is sort of keeping people going when maybe it's not you know going as quickly as possible yeah like trying to sort of you know make sure people don't kind of lose that faith or like that sort of like desire to keep doing things like are there would you say i realize so Actually, you know, what's the biggest challenges of the role? But like, you know, for people wanting to get into these sort of roles, like, are there sort of, of moments, are there, are there bits of advice that in those hard times, uh, you would say are good things to sort of like, remember or to think about? Hmm. Maybe that's quite an abstract I one. <laughs> I guess like the hardest thing about my job is that you don't know when you might be skint. Like I, I've spent many, many years being really, really skint and, uh, and managers get paid when the artist gets paid and often the artist gets paid in like chunks, mm -hmm. um, at the beginning of like an album and you don't necessarily know if you're going to get the next chunk for the next album or if it's going to go well enough to, or even at what time, what, like uh, often you don't know what point these chunks of money might come in um that's quite tough um obviously it's tough when things don't go as well as you hope because also like artists are like putting themselves out emotionally out there emotionally on something that they then give to the world and then if the world doesn't like it that much it's really like i mean being an artist is just horrible for like a lot of the time like <laughs> Even when you're big, there's still always someone bigger. Like there's still you're still constantly comparing yourself, and and I think re re like Rebecca is a good example. Going from Slow Club, where she's in a band, and you're sort of vaguely protected by this like, if things don't go well, at least we're all in it together, you know, to like suddenly being self-esteem where she's like bearing her soul, and then like you know the the first album campaign did not go badly at all it, i i in my head it was like a great stepping stone and exactly what we needed but we have many conversations at the time because it's like if it doesn't go as well as the artist is hoping then it all comes down to like the music and their and their self-worth is so connected to the music yeah. and 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 also we'd like and it's across the board whether you're big or small like if you're it's so hard it's so much harder than it used to be even to like get a record deal these days like because you have to be so much for a lot of the time labels are looking to sign things that are a lot further uh like a lot more ready like they've already got had a TikTok hit or they've already got five hundred thousand streams a month for, you know like it or they're like the hottest thing ever and they've just been like plucked out of the windmill like it's like and it, it's interesting like when you realize that like the, the, this is a kind of side point actually but but the there are essentially gatekeepers to the music industry and every single one of them is a middle-aged man no offense to middle-aged men i love them but <laughs> but it is weird when you think about the fact that like 95 percent of the new music that you hear has been has been made has been decided on by a middle-aged man <laughs> like it's not being decided these decisions aren't being made by women 
it's so bizarre when you consider that like, obviously like established artists and obviously like there's some artists that arrive because the audience has made it clear they want it and you know but but it is weird when you think yeah. about that but anyway um i don't rest um, <laughs> that in your sort of 17 18 years do you feel like that's changed at all uh, no. Right. no. <laughs> Okay, interesting because I, I think you know maybe slightly, maybe slightly. There's definitely more female ARs at major labels um, mm. than there used to be. How do you, you like, you know, not like how do you get these things heard in the right way, but like is that something where you've had conversations with men doing the same job as you and it's different? Like, what do you think specifically as a as a female trying to sort of like infiltrate those systems um yeah it's like i've definitely in the past been known to like i've worked with i've co-managed with lots of men and i still do um but it is like re really sad that like there's been moments many times in the in the last 17 years where i'm like hmm i want to have this conversation with this a and r guy or this other important male in the music industry and i'm like i should take in my co-manager with me because then they'll show me respect like isn't that sad <laughs> i mean it's just on my mind because all all over the news today has been the misogyny of music um parliamentary thing um, oh, which just, yeah there's, there's loads of press about it okay. um, so i'm really glad that like they they um are talking about it and, and you know hopefully that will change but it is a bizarre industry and um, not always the nicest. Yeah. What kind of keeps you... Like, I mean, I kind of, I always think like it's a shit, like I kind of don't even want to say like what, what are the ways to sort of combat that? Because, you know, the reality is that you shouldn't really need to find, well, oh my God, ah, strong. Baby's joined just to take the edge off the conversation. <laughs> Dark <laughs> conversation about men in the music. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, obviously the answer to this is that you diversify the people at the top and you don't have to have these problems where people feel that their voices aren't being heard but i guess the reality is that that isn't going to happen instantly so like mm. sort of things that you have found um like how, how do you sort of mentally deal with that issue like what kind of keeps you like up um hmm I just kind of pretend that it doesn't exist <laughs> <laughs> and just, you know, um, command respect in the only ways that I know how and just doing my job well. And, um, that's, and, and talking about it because, um, that's the only way that people will be, will, um, things will change really. And obviously if all these labels hire more women and put them at the top of their labels. <laughs> be easier. And and also you can just go and give strawberry a cuddle so yeah that's exactly cool. that takes the edge off <laughs> <Help there. laughs> um, so you have been sort of involved so at the moment am i right in thinking that like um big moon are under east city which is you working with other mm -hmm. people self esteem and cherish mm -hmm. and that, that's like a thing that is like your own company uh yeah we have I haven't called it a company really, but, but it's just me and Terence, yeah. Of like another thing, like how, how does that, in terms of like how different it is working as part of like a big company and like you've obviously kind of worked in smaller teams and stuff, like what, what do you think are the kind of main differences with like how you can go about doing things independently or with, or with other organisations? Um, I guess it's uh, so much of management is like pulling um, your contacts and knowledge and so connecting with other companies bigger companies um is really really useful for that because there'll always be someone who's like oh no what you should do is this that and the other one or like i need a tour manager does anyone know anyone and there'll be a million suggestions you know it's like just a pool of information and also just learning from other managers um like i work with tav on big moon who runs east city management and he's just he also manages Wolf Alice and Alt J and he's one of the nicest guys in the biz and um, it's just knows so much and um, quite a lot of the time I just need a, a sounding board I don't really like managing things on my own because I just need like 
someone to bounce ideas off. I don't necessarily always know what to do instantly. Mm. I like to talk about it with someone. Sometimes I'll call Tav and I'll be like, I don't know what to do about the situation. I was kind of thinking maybe I should do this, blah, 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 blah. So I'm thinking maybe I should do this. Is that what I should do? And he's like, yes, I think that's what you should do. And it's like, I just answered my own question, but I just needed someone to be like, yes, you're right. <laughs> um, and so that's really useful. And, um, but then I love working with Terrace as well. Like she's, uh, she's got qualities that I don't have. Um, and I've got qualities that she doesn't have. So it works really well because we're, yeah, we just fill the gaps basically. Exactly. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> that we have been chatting for a bit so i'll probably try and kind of wind things up i don't know why i said wind, anyway. <laughs> wind. wind. Uh, yeah there we go awesome skills great um but yeah i think like the main the thing that i really liked that you're saying is like you know sometimes you just have to be like i am a manager now because i think realistically you know a lot of people's first steps into this will be like they've got mates that are a band and they're all really young and they don't have a manager and you kind of go like yeah fuck it i'll do it i'll give it a go and like i think it is just completely learning on the job mm. but like, what kind of general advice would you give to anyone that is thinking about accepting that offer um so uh actually i should mention there's there's the, the music managers union is called the mmf and uh they do courses in music management so if you are one of those people who's just found an artist and you think you might give it a crack doing one of those music courses is really really useful like i did one during covid after 15 years of management and i still learned things that i didn't know already um so that's a good idea um but yeah i think if you're like I think there's th there's three ways to get to my job. There's applying for internships in the music industry and then learning about and and just apply for anything like agents assistants, like label internships. Obviously there's like hundreds of people going for those jobs, but it's really worth a try. Um, then there's the other option is to do kind of what I did, which is get involved in the local music scene. Um, this is easier if you are in a city or near a city. Um, and actually, I think that if you want to get into music and you're thinking about university, it's not so much what course you do is actually like if you can pick a music -y town, then you're way more likely to like be able to reach people like Manchester, Leeds, Glasgow, you know, um, rather than like Durham or whatever. Yeah. I mean, maybe there is an amazing thriving music scene in Durham, but I just, <laughs> but yeah, no, but that's, that's one thing. So yeah, so going by the live, live route and going to shows, talking to people, trying to get jobs working on the door, like speaking to bands, finding bands and artists that you like that might not have managers yet. Um, that kind of thing can just get you into that world. Trying to work for a promoter in your local city um, is a really good way um, to be like a, a promoter rep or whatever. And sorting out bands dressing rooms is, you know, mm -hmm. a really good entry job. Um, and then and the final way is to find an artist and try and help them. And like in my in my day, <laughs> you could just go through all the blogs. But these days, you know, you could just click on a new artist on Spotify and you'll be served like a million other new artists in a similar world. And uh, you could just spend hours going through and like what, trying to hear if there's anything that you really, really love. Um, that's a good way of doing it. Or or yeah, the like music scenes and then just finding someone and be like, I'm not a manager yet. Just be straight up about it. Don't you don't necessarily have to lie and be like, I don't know quite what I'm doing, but I'm happy to try. Um, and then the thing is, if you can get them to a point, then it then at that point, I would advise if you're brand new to it and they're getting a bit of excitement or whatever, and they're selling some tickets or like you've put a sing song out and it's getting some attention. Like at that point is when you'd probably want to go and see one of the management companies and say, look, I've got this artist. They've got some stuff happening. They might get some interest from labels or agents soon. Can I can I come and do it with you? Mm -hmm. And that's a really, really good way of like um, getting into the industry because because the problem is as soon as if it, if your artist that you've been developing then gets loads of heat and suddenly is the buzziest band ever, they're going to have a million other managers going. I can manage you better than your friend Joe. Um, 
so if you're ready if you're one step ahead and you've gone oh well i've been speaking to atc or you know like whatever red light and and i might be able to partner with them um then that's a really good way of doing it keep the claws in yeah <laughs> then i guess finally just because like this is because I, 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 like, i've always toyed with the idea and i've always been like oh okay like at what point because like i guess you don't want to right at the start be like shelling out for you know trying to pay a press person trying to like see whether you can get an agent on board like mm. on those really early days would you advise that you kind of just like if you're managing a really new band that are at those really formative stages and you're just trying to get any you know trying to get a few shows trying to like you know get people to listen to whatever like is that a thing where you would say to just do it all yourself for as long as possible rather than paying um yes yes and no i mean apply for a prs grant um but even to get a prs grant you kind of got to have a little bit of something going um i think that like yeah if it's super early and um and there's then it, I, I i think that you can kind of do it yourself like there's also just like really small companies that might do it considerably cheaper than the main companies and and that's a good way to like get an artist in um i think like i don't know i've like m the first manager i ever worked with at empire i remember him saying to me like first rule of management is never spend your own money <laughs> and i have always spent my own money <laughs> um and it's probably why i've always been broke but um but as long as you have an agreement with the band where it's just like i'm going to invest 300 quid in this press person because i'm really you know excited about this music can we agree that if and when you do a record deal i get paid that 300 pound back and that's how it works and it and it seems to to get credit cards <laughs> <laughs> um, no but there's also like it's you know i like a really amazing music um should reach people regardless of um press and radio and there's less and less press that you can get anyway nowadays and so I shouldn't say this to you, Lisa. <laughs> like so much of it, so much of it is about people sharing on social media and and people discovering you on SoundCloud, or Spotify, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so it so also is not the be all and end all that you necessarily have someone. That's true. Not the be all and end all. However, we really, really love the music press, and we should. <laughs> we do. It needs before. to be said. <laughs> um, great. I feel like that's probably good. Maybe just to end on like a nice positive note. Like <laughs> bye. <laughs> What's the most sort of rewarding thing about this job? Like if, you ha if somebody said, I really want to do this, what would be the thing that was like, okay, yeah, it's actually a fucking great job and here is, here is life. Do you think I've been too negative, Lisa? Yeah, <laughs> very realistic and good. And I think <laughs> I'm like, you'll be skint and it's really annoying. <laughs> but the point of these to be realistic is like, the second that you want to be a manager you're going to sign a contract with madonna and she's going to pay you a million pounds <laughs> manager like that, that's just not the reality no. so it's being very helpful but also oh isn't it nice to just say something <laughs> heartwarming at the end uh yes um honestly it is the i think it's the best job in the world it's so fun um because you like I don't know. I really like working for myself and not working for a company because it means that like every win that you have, you really feel it and you've really worked, earned it, you know, like every time you get paid, you're like, yes, <laughs> I much prefer, like, obviously then when you don't get paid, it's like, no, but um, I, I prefer living on that, like uh, <laughs> on the edge um, and it makes it way more rewarding when things go well. Um, and also you're just so close with it and you're so close with like every single part of the process like every demo that then goes on to become like a massive song and change so many people's lives like you it's really amazing to be like it's such a privilege to be there at the point that it's being made and being talked about and be part of that creative process because then when it does go back big it's like it feels so amazing um so yeah Lovely. I recommend everyone like, doing it. <laughs> everyone doing it. Um, thank you so much. That was genuinely very lots of nice things that people are saying. Thank you in the comments. Oh, so you. saw Rebecca saying love you in the comments. Everyone loves you, Rebecca. And Cabaret is amazing. <laughs> um,
um, please also go back to being a podcast soon. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. That was really, really great. We're going to write up all of your tips. They'll be uh, on an article on the 45's website, so they can be in like a sort of easy to digest guide. Um, and yeah, great. For, um, well done for the what, long, hard earned award. Very Just broken through. May your, <laughs> your management reign continue. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you so Bye. much. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.